other part of it on the personal side on the Schedule A as an itemized deduction. And then whether you rent or you don't rent or you own, you also could have utilities, of course, which like the gas and the electric and whatnot, and possibly phone if you're using it for business and personal, that that you're gonna be paying one bill for the utilities, which is gonna come through your bank account with one bill, which you might have to break out again to the business and the personal. And then you could have repairs like the roof, repair the roof or paint the building or something like that, which you might be breaking out between business and personal. Now, the couple different ways that we can do this, the, the easiest thing to do is when we have these come through, the first question is, should we be putting them on, on our, our business bookkeeping side of things or should they be personal? So for example, if I'm paying the rent, or my mortgage interest, it kind of seems like a personal type of thing. Should it be going through the business account at all? And you would think, well, maybe it would be the easiest thing to actually put it through the business account so that you can make sure that you're tracking it because uh, if you have a Schedule C type of business, you can, you can try to allocate part of it to the business side of things. So you could pull it into the the business account and record it as whatever they're coming up rent utilities and so on and so forth and then possibly periodically at the end of the year most likely or you could do it more often like at the end of the month or something like that if you want to do it for your own bookkeeping purposes and not just for taxes at your end we can make an adjustment using the class tracking in a similar way as we did with the auto expenses so if i turn my class tracking on then I have this, I can have this breakout with this adjustment similar to what we did with the auto expenses saying, saying, look, this is the, this is the amount of the expenses on the bookkeeping side. This is going to be the tax adjustment. And then we have our tax, uh, and then we have our, our tax amount that's going to be useful for creating the schedule C or when you actually create the schedule C, you might, you might use the tax software to help you to figure out the deductible amount at that time and then and then put the adjustment possibly into quickbooks if you wanted to have your little tax adjustment basically uh, within quickbooks instead of having to print it out or export it to excel and have your tax adjustment somewhere else so if you come back three years later you have your little adjustment that you can that you can uh, go back to in the event of an audit or something like that now another method that you could use is you can actually figure out what percent should be business or personal based on the square footage calculation, which is usually the calculation you get, you can get the ratio. And then as you do the data input for those expenses, the utility, the rent, and so on and so forth, you can create a rule so that when the money actually comes in, you are properly allocating it between uh, the tax deductible portion and possibly another, another account so you can kind of do the breakout as you do the data input so that's another another method that we can use it kind of tracks it on a perpetual method instead of like on a on a periodic adjustment type of system and the other thing that of course you can do is you may possibly have one quickbooks account that has both your personal and business in it a lot of people won't recommend that you do that but if you're a small business you might be able to do that and uh, and because you only need the Schedule C and you might not want to pay for two QuickBooks Online accounts so that you can track your business and personal. And if you get the plus or above, you might have the class tracking, which you can basically allocate out. And you could, I, I have done presentation on tags. So if you, if you want to pay for a cheaper version of QuickBooks and use a similar concept with the tags, it's a little bit more complex to do, but you could use the tags uh, in a similar kind of fashion. So if you take this concept and look at the course or section on tags, you could probably figure out how to do a similar kind of thing with the use of tags if you don't have plus or above, which has access to the class tracking. But if you had your, if you had your personal stuff going through here, you can assign everything that you enter to either business or personal. And then you can have an income statement for both your business and personal uh, type of information uh, that would be broken out. And then of course, same kind of idea with the home office, you can break out the the business uh, uh, side of the expenses 
and the and the personal side either periodically or as you go using a percent usually derived from the square footage of the home office compared to the whole square footage of the home okay so next time we're going to talk a little bit more about what the tax law generally says with regards to the deductibility of a home office so we can understand that and then think about how we might design our bookkeeping to be to be modeled around that so that we can have information that's relevant to us and have as easy a tax preparation process as possible as well as possibly being able to document the differences between our normal bookkeeping uh, input and the tax adjustments that are necessary so that if an audit happened at some point in the future three years down the line we can easily go back and see the reconciliation and say hey auditor this is what i did get out get out of my face because i did it right or something here's my reconciliation or whatever you know you know so that's what we'll do